Good afternoon, Professor. Can you please give us your name and your title? Sure. My name is Adam Maloof, and I'm a professor of geosciences here at Princeton. Professor, can you please tell us what is your main finding? We think we've found the oldest animals, the an oldest fossil animals in Earth history. Can you tell us how you came to this conclusion? We were in Australia, my graduate student Catherine Rose and I, and we were actually studying an ancient glacial episode called the Snowball Earth. In so doing, we were looking for evidence of life before and after the Ice Age to see if it had any influence on life. And lo and behold, completely unexpectedly, we found life much more complicated than we expected. Why did you want to investigate this issue? Well, it's been an age-old problem, older than Darwin himself. The question is, why did animals evolve? And what did they evolve from? And one of the biggest influences on life we expect are these very large glaciations called the snowball earths. So what we wanted to do was study that interval in time to understand what influence climate has on life and vice versa, what, what influence life has on climate. Could you please elaborate on any qualifiers? Sure. Um, the fossils that we found, which basically look like little piles of debris within a reef, um, a reef like the coral reefs you understand today, but these are stromatolites, so they look like basically reefs made of bacteria. Anyways, these little fossils that we found were pretty difficult to reconstruct. We had to slice the rock hundreds of times and generate 3D models from photographs of each little slice. The image that we get is a little bit complicated, and I would never argue that it's definitively a sponge. There's a couple different possibilities. One, for example, is that these are sponge-like animals, but may be part of some extinct lineage, something that no longer exists on Earth today, but shared characteristics with sponges. Another possibility is that it's not a sponge-like organism at all. Some have suggested that perhaps it's a worm that might have burrowed into a clast. We don't think this is the answer, and actually in some ways it would be even more interesting if that were the case, because worms are more complicated than sponges. Professor, I see that you have some rocks in front of you. and I'm calling them rocks for lack of a better word. Um, could you please explain um, what you have in front of you? Sure. Um, well, I've got a number of different rocks here. This is what, basically, what these fossils look like in outcrop. By in outcrop, I mean if you were wandering around in South Australia, walking in the mountains, you might stumble upon rocks that look like this. And what you see here is basically all the little red flakes are random two-dimensional slices through our three-dimensional fossil. And it should illustrate also the problem we have at hand. These rock, it's all the same density. So, you know, if you hurt yourself, you might go get an x-ray. And the x-ray will show the bones because they're very different densities than the blood and tissue. Our problem is that these fossils that we want to know what they look like, like your broken bone, have the exact same density. So they're virtually impossible to image. So then what we do is we bring rocks like this back from the field. We spend about two or three months every year in, the, in our summer in Australia working on projects like this. We bring the rocks back and we basically polish them so they look more like this. With these polished faces, we can both analyze them in the microscope, but we can also do what we call serial grinding and imaging. That's the process we've developed, where we basically take literally 50 microns at a time, less than the diameter of one of your hairs, and after every slice that we grind off, we photograph it. In that way, we see how the shapes, how these random 2D slices change as we move through the rock. And it's from these that we make traces of the fossil and construct the 3D model. So even though it may not look like too much in these little rocks, the images that we produce are quite spectacular. The same way that you have no idea what's going on inside of a person. And then once you image it with an x-ray, you see all the bones and tissues and stuff interconnected. 